Minutes with McNabb. How you doing? This is Sean McNabb from Minutes with McNabb. My guest this week, the incomparable Toshi Yanagi, Jimmy Kimmel's guitar player. Hear about a day in a life on the Jimmy Kimmel Show on the next Minutes with McNabb. Welcome to Minutes with McNabb, Mr. Toshi Inagi, an incredible guitar player, producer, and the guitar player on the Jimmy Kimmel Band. Welcome to Minutes with McNabb, Toshi. Hi, thanks for having me, Sean. I sure appreciate you doing this today, and um, I know that you were feeling the effects of uh, your second COVID shot, so I hope you're feeling yes. better. Much better today, thank you. Yesterday, no, but today, yes. So good. <laughs> I totally get it. I, I had mine a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I totally get that. Welcome to Minutes with McNabb. I want to talk, um, you know, about a few things today, but really, why don't you tell me about growing up in Japan and um, how you how you decided you wanted to come to the States and, and tell me about your musical background and starting in Japan. Okay. Well, I... My parents are both classical musicians. My dad is opera singer and my mom is piano teacher, accompanist of my dad. Um, and I, you know, since I was born, uh, music is always a part of me. Uh, my parents used to be, um, used to uh, whip me to play uh, um, piano and singing, you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but I so I didn't I really didn't love it because of that so I said I wanted to get away from piano and I said hey mom can I play uh, I'm gonna play violin so I studied violin and my mom said oh when you if you play violin piano is such an important part of your ear so I had to end up playing both instruments you know um, uh, stupid of me um, so Classical mu music is just a big part of uh, my life. And uh, I joined orchestra when I was, um, uh, 11, was it 11, 10, maybe. Uh, but um, at the meantime, my dad uh, gave me a, a, tr a transistor radio and a little mono cassette player. I used to record a Japanese um, military base a radio station. To play all the rock music, so I used to put those together and record it. So that that was my uh, introduce of uh, rock music uh, uh, since I was like uh, eight or something. So I was doing both of them. I was listening to rock music while I was playing, you know, classical music. And the time came uh, maybe junior high. Yeah. I bought my first electric guitar and started um, transcribing Iron Maiden. For, right. uh, so, so that was, yeah, my uh, younger age um, transition of a classic. How, how cool is that? It, uh, because I was a big Iron Maiden fan too, and um, what a great band! And, you know, what are they? Forty yeah. years. Kind of ruin, ruling the world, doing what they do. But um, uh, so you got the guitar. You, you were listening. I mean, was it the Beatles and the Stones? And uh, after no. that, uh, I was listening Beatles, and uh, I guess the artist that I didn't know from that radio station, uh, and I later found out that was Eagles or the Zeppelin or the uh, Olin Brothers, um, even. But it really struck me to play guitar 
was of course Eddie Van Halen and Steve Lukather from Toto. That was that's two of my ultimate mentor. Um, and and you couldn't have better mentors with those guys. And we'll, we'll touch on that in a little bit. Um, you know what I I love about you is that you're you're so well rounded. And I found this that uh, either you're a great classical musician that can't jam, or you're a great musician that can jam but can't play classical music and i always thought that was cool that you can do both you know like a lot of classical musicians they're they're married to the charts and stuff but you bring both and i also see that your kids are following in your footsteps and playing classical music which is really cool yeah. and you yeah know, you got a beautiful family but i how did you find that balance you know between the two uh, basically, I quit classical music when I was, was it, uh, when I was uh, 15, there was August, uh, I was I was in a junior philharmonic, Tokyo junior philharmonic, the orchestra group, um, was, there was a chance to go to Europe, and I, I wasn't really into it, you know, so I didn't really practice for the audition for that tour, and I was, playing half ass and uh, oh sorry and she said you know she was kind of pointing at me like you you need to you need to practice why didn't you practice blah 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 and I said okay that's it I this is it and I quit right then you know right after audition I said this is it I'm out goodbye and that's the last of classical music for me and then I was more for uh, popular or rock music, yeah. Since yeah, I was nice, 15. but I sometimes I play violin for the people that need it needs a part in their song, and I can do it at home only at my house. So I can take it take a time, and I can't say myself, you know, go to a different studio and do the uh, violin part. But you know, right here I can do it yes so i still play violin sometimes yeah and you know i hear that in your playing sometimes and i i think i i feel like i hear it in eric johnson's playing too i don't know if he was a violin player but i hear that in your licks sometimes that that violin <laughs> uh, influence but um oh. i know that you're not only are you a great guitar player but you're you're an amazing producer and arranger and Me? um <laughs> yeah man and i and i want to thank you because the the tags on our show here you know you helped me with immensely and just brought these amazing guitars to and and really helped me turn those and i want to thank you for that so if you're listening to these musical um interludes in and out of the minutes with mcnab shows toshi nagi has a huge part to do with that and I, i'm forever grateful for that um so anyway so me. yeah Thanks. brother oh man it's my honor and um so tell me about um coming to LA and I, I know you've been here a long time and what what that was like so I was pra uh, my parents said uh, I was practicing for um, to get in J uh, Japanese well, music university in Japan my parents were teaching me to preparing for that test but um, I wasn't really into it and they saw that and it so what you what really you want to do you know and i think i want to play guitar so then my mom gave me a one-way ticket china airline from tokyo to san francisco bam so good luck that was, <laughs> <laughs> that was <good. laughs> um okay i didn't know anybody i could not speak english at all maybe hello and i'm hungry that was a two word <laughs> that i knew okay <laughs> um, yeah so that my my parents definitely had balls to do that you know i have to give it up i really appreciate that that they did for me you know yeah that's like you know good luck you know and yeah. that's that's almost completely rock and roll is you just got to jump in and and have some faith yeah. and uh and, yeah, I, and I love that that they did that uh yeah. for you so I know that, you know, I want to talk about Kimmel and everything, but tell me what led up to Kimmel. And I know that that was not your first TV show. I know that there was 
several before that, but how'd you get into that? Well, after so Musicians Institute, I went. And Am I? after that, yeah, and I uh, became freelance. Um, I was teaching there for six months and I became a freelance uh, musician. And I uh, started playing at the uh, Big Tato in, in North Hollywood. And that became a, um, how do you say, connecting with the different musicians. Um, networking. Networking, yes. Um, yeah. And I, there's a band called Sicilian Oil and the Wild Clamps. That, that all the Kimmel band met in that band, like 92. Yeah. And, Cecilia Noel and the Wild Clamps. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There's all the studio guys, you know, in town, you know, getting uh -huh. together. Anyway, so I start doing local gigs. That led to, do you want to do this little tour with this new artist, Savori, uh, Polydor artist? And I opened up for uh, Sheryl Crow and Brian Ames in Europe, or we did a tour in Canada. And... At the time, I also played with, I was playing with Terry Lynn Carrington, the girl, a lady drummer. Um, okay. Excellent, I mean, legend player. But anyway, she was having me playing her band. Then in 96, this first TV show, it's called The, Vi the Vibe TV. Um, which yeah. is Quincy Jones magazine called The Vibe. That became a TV show. And the band, they wanted to have a demographically correct, you know, band. And so uh, for Americans, Asians, uh, and Latino and uh, uh, white. Um, so I was Ooh. the Asian part of the band. <laughs> um, so that's the first one. And that, uh, finished in the year, and the, uh, the percussionist Peter Peter Michael Escovedo, uh, which is Sheila's brother, uh, he was became he became a musical director of uh, the Martin Short Show, uh, the Canadian comedian, the Martin Short, yeah. and yeah. so he pulled me pulled me into the that band, and that falls in the year, fold in the year, uh, and uh, he got another daytime TV show called. Uh, Wayne Brady show, um, sure. Wayne Brady show, and uh, he pulled me on to that one. So during and during that um, Wayne Brady daytime TV show, um, my friend Cleto, you know, you know Cleto Escovito, right? Yeah, sure yeah. do. Uh, and Cleto uh, called us, called me and Jeff Babco, the keyboard player. Um, I got this late night TV show that's starting. Can you guys, you know, come and help me? I never done this before. And we said, uh, late night versus daytime, you know, uh, let's, let's give a shot in a late night. So we hopped on, um, yeah. 2003 and the uh, Wayne Brady show finished six months later and we still here 18 years later. So. Uh, that's how it's a lot of the core group, a lot of the same guys, right? Yes. Yes. Um, so that's, that's really cool that, you know, it started with some people and then it kind of snowballed into other things. So let, tell me about, you know, the average day at the Jimmy Kimmel show. And I, I know things have been different with COVID and, yeah. uh, and I also have so much respect for Jimmy just to keep it going and keep you guys working. And, you know, I think a lot yeah. of hosts probably, that really shows his character and his love for you guys. And, but tell me, run it down for me on an average day, what your day would be like on the Jimmy Kimmel so show. So we go in there around 11 o'clock. Uh, we attend Jimmy, Jimmy's rehearsal and for one hour or something. And uh, then we re our, the band rehearsal time. We pick and choose what song to play that day. Uh, maybe a few covers and a uh, few originals uh, and walk on music when the guest comes on. And um, 
so we rehearse for whatever uh, time that we need. And also sometime if the artist needs a backup band and we we uh, accompany those artists. So we yeah. sometimes we rehearse with them and stuff. Then if there is a uh, like a comedy bit or some the video uh, stuff that needs a background music, we sometimes record for those. Um, a bit up up in our room, we have a studio there, so we record those music. Or we can go out and do something and come back. And we come, we dress, be ready by four thirty, and show starts around five for one hour. Nice. And what 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 are some of the highlights and the the guests that have just you know stick in your that stick in your mind that were just like wow that was really cool and you know because i'm sure there's been many on that show oh man the biggest names yeah uh playing with billy gibbons he yeah. sat in with us that was great it's such the a reverend. easy going great music you know and uh, also messio parker do you know messio oh, yeah, yeah. parker yeah awesome player from oh man that was some uh, culture shock. Um, it just one saxophone player just lead us like you know, pulling us like this, just groove wise, and it just it was amazing. Just the experience that he had, and just show that to us. That was definitely a learning thing. And uh, one time, uh, there's a one. Uh, one time I was, um, so the first TV show, we were, we were playing with James Brown, Mr. Brown. Nice. And Mr. Brown. Uh, we were like, yeah, Mr. Brown, <laughs> yes. Man, uh, we were playing Sex Machine. Jet, 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 jet. And he said, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Guitar player. And I, Damn it! What did I do? You know, like he called called my you know called my name and play like shaga that 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 shaga that that shaga that shaga part I didn't I wasn't playing or something. So then I said, okay, man, everybody froze up. You know, like hey, Josh, you got to play it right. You know, so but we were fine after that. That was yeah, that experience. I was like sweating and. Hey, who but can say, good not everybody can say I got called out by James Brown. <laughs> and I got a great James Brown story um, when I was, uh, I think I think I was 20. And we yeah. played this festival in Japan. It was called Japan A2. Yeah. And James, it was all these cool bands, you know, Quiet Riot and Dio and James Brown and George Duke. And <laughs> all these That's awesome. Yeah, you know, concerts used to be like that. There used to be more diversity on the bills instead of just like all these rock bands. But it was it was really cool, and I'll never forget this. Um, my singer in Quiet Riot at the time, um, the great Paul Shortino, he sees James Brown, you know, and he runs up, "Hey, James, James, you're you're my biggest inspiration, man. I just love everything you do." And this security uh -huh. guy stands right in front of him and goes, "That's Mr. Brown to you, son." <laughs> <laughs> and he, he, he you just saw him like shrink you know and i just i'll never forget that as long as i live and um i did yeah. get to meet him also once at the rainbow bar and grill during the day for some reason or another he was in there and he said hi and um you know james james brown is just the epitome of groove soul and and funkiness and and uh, that's really cool that, that you got to do that. But I bet for a minute there, you were like, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I mean, our uh, the band guys are like Greg Fillingen from, you know, and Terry and yeah. all the name guys. Like, yeah. And the name, those, those guys are even like, you know, like frozen up and Mr. Brown, yeah. you know, so I was shaking up but it was a good experience <laughs> that's totally. cool um 
you were also there, and I know this, uh, you were also there when Van Halen played. And yeah. were you on the side of the stage when Roth cut his nose open and all that stuff? Oh, yeah. I was there. It, it, <laughs> yes. It um, down for people that don't know. Well, so they were doing sound. Uh, no, they were doing, yeah. Uh, they were playing uh, Panama. And when he was doing this, you know, that, then he cut his, he spliced his nose like this, you know, and. Now, was it a sword? What, what, what did he cut? No, the mic stand? no, it was some kind of a mic stand that has a sharper edge or something. Just then, and he said, um, then he went backstage and Eddie, well, no, no, he said, you know, hey, I cut you cut my nose so I, let me uh, stitch it up or like a uh, patch it up or something so but the best part was uh, during that time when he was back there for like maybe 10 minutes Eddie and uh, everybody else started jamming that that jamming was so good because it was you know it was just jam and it was very creative and like you know yeah that was so cool yeah. and i still got it in my phone but yeah nice. i'll show it to you sometime oh please do um, yeah and, that and i uh go ahead yes then uh be between the show and the rehearsal uh you know i could come up and meet eddie and those guys and um i could shake his hand and i only i could say thank you for the experience, whatever. I was so starstruck, but you know, at least I could talk to him and uh, uh, express my appreciation. That was a highlight, you know. Oh, absolutely. Since, yeah. We know that he changed the face of uh, probably the most in influential guitar player since Jimi Hendrix. You know, he, he yes. really changed the face of rock guitar and. And that's cool yeah. that you were able to meet your hero. Which leads me to my next question is, I know that you are a super Eddie fan and um, also you've studied it. And I, I know how well you can play it because we share this band called Brown M&Ms, which yeah. we're not a tribute band. We are just four guys in the industry um, catching the vibe of early Van Halen. And yes. Uh, Tell me about brown m ms because dude you just kill it and i can well, just tell the passion that you have for van halen and, and eddie's guitar playing but uh tell us about brown m ms um a just I, some that was one of my i just say bucket list list um to do you know play it right the the van halen music and uh you, Joe, uh, Travis, and uh, Eric Dova. I mean, it's the the best musicians that I could do it with. And and I we well we did one show right uh, with the whiskey, and yeah. uh, that was a, I think that was a pretty good. And we can we caught a uh, uh, vibe of early, early Halen, and, and uh, that was a. Yeah right place to do it you know Yeah, and if hopefully if anybody, do more, and if anybody's yeah. interested in seeing that, there's there's some videos from that whiskey gig. Unfortunately, COVID hit and kind of shut everything down for us uh, playing yeah. live shows for about a year and a half now. Right. But uh, we've got several videos out um, on yeah. YouTube, so check out Brown M and M's if you if you love Van Halen, which who doesn't love Van Halen? And more, uh, most specifically, watch Toshi. Yanagi just tear these guitars up and 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 a tribute to one of his heroes. Uh, it is an honor to do that with you, my friend. 
It's, it is. Oh, thank uh, you. And much more to come on that now. Um, okay. I, I have a couple of uh, qu just one more quick question. Then I'm going to have the rapid fire five, which is something that we do. Um, it's what just five questions that you answer very short answers. And uh, we're going to get to that. But um, I, I wanted to ask you about this one thing. Um, how cool is it that uh, the first Japanese guy in history won the Masters uh, the other week? And and that just oh, yeah. Uh, you can be very proud, huh? Oh, yeah. And you know, entire Japan, I think, proud of him. You know, and Absolutely. It's a, yeah. It's a, it's a something. And he, this is his 10th time trying. Right. So... Yeah, I really, really uh, am proud of him, you know, kept it going and yeah. Yeah, so I, I am too. I, I, I watch golf and, you know, uh, some people think that's lame, but uh, my, my wife being one of them. But, you know, I find it peaceful <laughs> to watch. Uh, I, I've played a little bit. I'm not very good, but I, I love to watch the pros and I find there's something, some serenity to watching golf on Sundays. And, you know, you're watching the best yeah. players in the world. And to see him win that by one stroke and not – Yeah. Now that's a lot of pressure. You know, when you're putting for, for the Masters Championship, that that's, you know, that, that's no joke. And uh, I was so happy to see him uh, win that. That was awesome. Yeah. Okay. That being said uh, – we're going to do the full throttle rapid fire five, which is something I do with okay. uh, all my, guys. some of the questions are mine. Some are the producers. So uh, with that okay. caveat, uh, who has been your most, who has been the most influential to you, Toshi? Uh, well, Eddie Van Halen. And I know you mentioned Steve Lukather too. Oh, that's, yeah yeah he both are my f ultimate mentor yeah yes look uh, couldn't he's a great more than and too he's a good advisor and you know he lived, yeah. yeah and friend yeah. right yeah yeah uh, can i can i tell you quick luke uh luke uh story absolutely or no absolutely. Yes. yeah um so I was a big fan, right? And uh, so 92 th through 94 or 5, three years, 5, I was uh, playing at the uh, Big Potato every Monday. So one of Monday, here comes Luke, you know, and sit right in front of me. And I was shaking up and like, oh, shit, you know. And... Um, I was, okay, I have to play right, you know, and uh, in between the song, I was kind of doing kind of noodle, noodling, you know, blah, 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 you know, noodling stuff, and he goes like, none of that shit. <laughs> he just kind of whispered, and oh, shit, you know. Uh, but during the night, I was drinking, I remember, Grand Manier on the rocks, and when I finish it, uh, there's a new one comes up, and um, who's buying these and I didn't know so I another one goes and you know comes right up you know and and I see Luke and he's Luke you know he's drinking the same thing so he was apparently buying my drink and at the end of the night and he said hey come come on Josh you know come sit here and he gave me his number uh, he gave me his number and he told me like you know when you have a problem just call me you know and we became friends after that, you know. That's really cool. Nice. And, and for, for people that don't know, yeah. the Baked Potato is this establishment that's been around a long, long time. I Don't quote me on the year. It, it's been since the 70, 80s. Since 70, 70. It's 72 or something, yeah. Yeah, that, so yeah. it's this little tiny kind of jazz fusion, but they have all kinds of music. But it's a tiny little club. And, you know, the biggest of big names have played there, you know, um, everybody, Alan Holdsworth, all the jazz people, Abraham Laboreal, um, yeah. Chick Corea's played there, right? I mean, yeah. everybody, Stanley Clark, yeah. you know, Toshi, yeah. 
uh, the Toto guys, you know, it, the list is, just goes on and on. And they have these giant baked potatoes. It's called the baked potato, by the way. Yeah, and yeah. they have giant baked potatoes that I'm telling you, these things, it looks like a football. And yeah. they have whatever you want on top of it for the most part. And yeah, but it's really an institution for um, great musicianship is what you're going to see. Working you musician and yeah. very uh, good place to connect with the different musicians working yeah. musicians too so absolutely and it's just it's one of those places that um you know a lot of venues have struggled this last year because of covid and um that is certainly yeah. one of them along with you know the troubadour and the whiskey and the roxy and everything here in los angeles but i know all over the world those venues have struggled so it these are very important venues that we yes. need to support support uh, it start open now opening up start yeah opening up having uh, they're doing a three days a week now and uh, half of a capacity or something like that i can't remember how much yeah. but uh if you've got a time or you can support them or go in there or um i think they still do uh how do you say live broadcast uh, Live internet how do you say? yeah live streaming, streaming. Yeah. yeah yeah so, yeah so do what you, you can to support these venues because you know these are places that you know, we've got are absolutely essential to musicians and and to people yeah. that love music and you know i i think at the end of the day uh music is very healing for people and uh yes. we really need that right now yeah. as a society i I'll, think i'll be there i'll be there may 27th with uh Jamie Kime with a Danny Carey from Tool and also June 2nd, June 2nd, uh, sorry, June, I think June, uh, June 4th, June 4th with uh, Stuart Ham. Uh, oh, nice. The Baked Potato, so if you guys, if you guys. We'll check those guys out at the Baked Potato. Um, okay, back to the uh, Full Throttle Rapid Fire yeah. 5 questions. Sure. Yes. Um, no problem. I love that story. I, I know that you're, you know, musically diverse in so many areas and uh, such a great producer and arranger. But I mean, what are what's your favorite kind of music or some of your favorite kind of music to play? To play? Yeah. Um, rock and roll. Yeah, baby. That's my favorite, my favorite <laughs> music. Period. But right on. I have to. But I have to do, you know, R and B or the funk, pop music to yeah. support. You know, so yeah. Now, I know there's nothing that you can't do, and I love that. And I I always admired that about musicians oh, that were well rounded. You know, it's uh, it's it's I try. Good. I I think it's always uh, helps you to get gigs to be well-rounded, you know, and I think it's very important. Okay, so if there was one word associated with you that you wanted people to associate with Toshi Yanagi, what would it be? Well, what, I, I, that I don't understand. What is it, associate? If there, yeah, if there was one word that you wanted to, for people to think of when they thought of Toshi Yanagi, what would it be? Japanese? I'm just kidding, sorry. <laughs> 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 I don't know. Uh, like, I, like, uh, I well, give me an example. Sorry. Like, great guitar player. <laughs> nice guy. No. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Dorky? All right, I, st I don't know. I I stumped him. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I don't uh, know. That I don't know. Um, all right. This is a producer question I got to ask you. Who's the most famous person in your phone right now? Phone? Yes. Uh, Jimmy Kimmel? Or, Perfect. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, Sheila E. Nice. Um, I don't think I don't think it gets much bigger than Kimmel. Yeah. And 
he just seems like such a cool dude, Toshi. Oh, yeah. Jimmy's the best, coolest, such a thoughtful person. You know, sometimes he cries on the you know TV. That's how he is. You know, just that's real, huh? Sincere, you know, and they, we all love him and appreciate yeah. him. Yeah, and I, I think people get that sense from him that he's he's a a real host. It's not phony. It's all real, and I, I feel like he wears his heart on his sleeve. You know, he's that kind of dude. He goes through everything that that happens to the show. That's how he is. You know, such such a responsible producer, and that's yeah. why I think we're here now. You know. Yeah. Well, Toshi, I want to thank you for your time with Minutes with McNabb today, and um, let thank us know you, where we let us know where we can find you, um, everybody. Toshi Inagi, guitar player, producer, and my friend. Thanks for joining thank me today, you, brother. John. All right, I'll see you soon. God bless. Hey.